West. I'll just uh, say that we're here today, Martin Lehman, who is co-chair of the Albert Symposium, Tim Richardson, member of the local organizing committee, and myself, Lone Kerner, who is chair of the symposium. On behalf of Martin, Tim, and the Danish Center for Environmental Assessment, I want to thank you for the chance to present some of the discussion from over two weeks ago. I will firstly give a short overview of the event in Aalborg and who were there, and secondly present some of the main discussion points. A little bit about, about the background. The timing of our two symposiums feels very appropriate in the wake of, of uh, COP15 leading up to COP16 later this year. We were many not satisfied with what was achieved in Copenhagen, but trying not to overlook the progress either. Climate change was put on the top of the political agenda, even in a time of economic crisis worldwide. And there is an awareness in society of the urgency of handling climate change at not postponing or ignoring. And the two events in Auburg and Washington DC must be seen in that light. What makes climate change so important and singular then? As presented by Robert Watson, it is predicted to affect almost every aspect of human life, so there is no space for bystanders. The pressure on the world is increasing, and likewise for the impact assessment community to act. And climate change is not only an environmental issue, it is an all-encompassing threat. Threat to health, food supply, ecosystems, cities, water supply, and so on, and the threat to security and peace due to competition for resources. These are some of the themes uh, which were also discussed in Aalborg. And the message was very clear uh, from the symposium. We need to develop our understandings, our assessments, and our actions to avoid uh, the uncontrolled experiment. Sorry, I'll just flip here again. Covering the continuation of a high emission-based economy but also avoiding uh, or neglecting the adaptation, which at the end can be a matter of, of survival for, for human being. The symposium was a space in which we reflected and responded to climate change. During the symposium, we addressed the questions of what should be our response and priorities regarding climate change integration. And we also reflected on the practical answers to the critical question, trying to sharpen our understanding uh, and our tools. As organizers, we find that the delegates together over the two days reflected on the trends, on our own impact assessment practice, and identified ways forward for the field of impact assessment. The symposium ran, in, uh, ran it, uh, with parallel sessions and plenary, together with the group of theme leaders of the 12 themes that you can see here, we created a space for discussion and dialogue. And the extra time for workshops and more interaction was very much appreciated by all the delegates. We also had the great honor of having five keynote speakers. Besides Lord Nicholas Stern, all keynotes were present during the full symposium and took also part in the closing plenary for debate based upon the two days presentations and, and discussions. We were then in Aalborg. We were approximately 50% practitioners and 50% researchers. And this combined with representation from 23 countries made the symposium a very interesting space where we could build bridges between different experiences. And then to some of uh, the main discussion points. These just to give you an idea of part of the results. When the organizing team here has recovered a bit more. We will finish the symposium report, which will be distrib distributed to all the delegates. The report will include the presentation abstracts, key messages, policy guidance, and a general syn uh, synthesis uh, from the symposium. The first discussion point I want to present is related to uh, climate change integration, which is a field of practice just emerging. It is, inter or integration of climate change and impact assessment is a relatively new field of action and just emerging. There are not really any standards 
But in turn, we saw during the two days a lot of explorative work going on in Europe and within many different sectors. And one main conclusion from the discussion in Alberg was that impact assessment has a role to play as a formal, established, and acknowledged framework worldwide. So impact assessment can and should be used as an arena and tool for, for, for both reducing greenhouse gas emissions and making the necessary adaptation to the changes that are happening and will continue to happen. And when integrating climate change and impact assessment, we need to be reflective upon our own practice, both in relation to what and how we assess climate impact, but also in relation to the processes we set up for communication and stakeholder involvement. Another uh, discussion point was adaptation, which challenges impact assessment practice and decision-making. The experience pre presented during the day showed that adaptation is taking less care of in practice and that the comprehensive assessments of both mitigation and adaptation to avoid trade-offs and support synergies are in general uh, lacking. Adaptation is new to impact assessment, and as also pointed out by the European Commission at the symposium in Alberg, it needs to be strengthened in both legislation and guidance. The Euro European Commission is therefore now working on developing guidance on integration of climate change and impact assessment, and this is done in cooperation between DG Environment and DG Climate and coordinated with the biodiversity uh, as well. That process has just uh, started up and, and uh, we'll hear more about uh, the European Commission work uh, in, in uh, 2011. Climate change makes it necessary for us to deal with long-term risk and uncertainty as a scale or at a scale we haven't seen before. So complexity and uncertainty involved in doing this was also a discussion point in Alberg. Uncertainty is an unavoidable part of impact assessment. The impact assessment experience, though, includes non-handling of climate change uncertainty. And we saw examples of strategies like ignoring uncertainty and postponing handling, with the risk of communicating false security to policymakers and the public and not making the necessary adaptation, which at the end might lead to dangerous situations for, for human life. Beriato underlined the necessity for us to engage with uncertainty in science and in policy making. And Eric Berlow argued that in order to pass the discomfort zone in relation to uncertainty and complexity, we need to distinguish between complexity and complication. We are able to identify trends and as also presented in, in the previous presentation, it is trends that are scientific uh, valid, and that needs to be our point of departure, including openness and transparency on uncertainty in our assessments. A way forward in order to develop our practice is guidance development, which was uh, also uh, one of the main discussion points. A range of guidance of climate change integration is available today. However, since uh, there is a lack of real integration, especially for adaptation, it was argued during the symposium we need more guidance developed. The discussion, though, had a critical edge to it. Why? Because a general view uh, presented is that our field is having more and more guidance available and we have limited evaluation of it and how the guidance actually are used in practice. Secondly, the character of climate change was also raised as maybe requiring guidance with a different emphasis than we normally have seen within our field. This could, for example, include more emphasis on the process and on stakeholder involvement than on the tools for assessing impacts. The next discussion point I want to present is uh, related to communication and dialogue. Communication and dialogue was uh, raised as needed uh, both between science and policymakers, between the impact assessment community and climate change professionals, between authorities and the public, and so forth. And as Stern underlined in his interview with us, working together and communicating across fields of practice and sectors is fundamental. And it's not just a risk we have to get across. 
It's also, also the attractiveness of the response. The role of impact assessment and the role of the International Association for Impact Assessment was also discussed. And the view is that we, as an association, can play a vital role as communication hub. However, the challenge in creating communication between impact assessment as a field of practice and climate change expertise was raised in Aalborg. It has just in our own symposium shown to be a challenge to get climate, uh, climate experts into our field. This will likely be an even greater challenge for the impact assessment practice going on in administrations. Where should we go from here? Later this year, we have COP16 in Cancun, and we know that, perhaps not surprisingly, countries will remain divided, and there are some major issues to resolve. But within our communication or community of practice, we don't have such problems. There is a consensus about what needs to be done. By having the Climate Change Symposium in Alborg and in Washington, we have a chance to speed up the process of making impact assessment an example of climate change integration at its best. As a final point from Alborg, I would like to highlight the leadership and critical agency through which impact assessment can raise understandings and reflections and, at the end of the day, help decision makers. Agency refers to the capacity of an individual or a group to act and make free choices. At first, this does not imply a specific moral dimension to the ability to act. By adding reflective, we therefore get a distinct, you know, distinct way forward. For example, involving that the impact assessment community secure a holistic perspective comprising both mitigation and adaptation, climate change impacts and other environmental and social objectives, and not at least the synergies and trade-offs between these. It also includes acknowledging uncertainty, and our role is to hinder uncertainty, avoidance, and non-handling, and also to secure openness and transparency about uncertainty in our processes and in our statements. It also involves being proactive identifying decisions and policies significant for climate change and actively turn to relevant stakeholders in public and private organizations. We have, through impact assessment, the opportunity to take leadership and be critical agents to benefit climate change integration in policy and decision making. It is obvious that we cannot carry uh, all the responsibility or the task but the Olbo Symposium showed an acknowledgement and belief in impact assessment as a field to make a difference. I will now come to the closing, uh, or come to the end of the presentation. As, as I mentioned, these were just some of the discussion points, and we will, uh, in our conference report, uh, look into to all the discussion points uh, that we had in Olberg. We hope that the Impact Assessment Symposium, uh, or the two symposiums together, together will provide a basis for finding an agenda for impact assessment with the aim of moving the field and making us more prepared to make a difference afterwards. Left here from uh, Alborg is only to wish you all a successful symposium, full of interaction, full of progression, and hopefully also new friendships and new collaborations. So all the best from us here, and a wish, uh, an enjoyable symposium today and tomorrow.